Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to talk about open access to human genome data. And to start off with, I'd like to give you a very brief, wrong button, biology lesson. So when we say human genome data, we mean uh, the complete set of genetic information, which is then the foundation for the physical and psychological possibilities of the individual. And it's encoded in these 23 chromosomes, uh, pair of chromosomes, uh, in all the cells of your body, uh, encoded, uh, made up of three billion uh, base pairs, often denoted A, C, G, and T. And it's the composition of different genome sequences that affect the probabilities of acquiring or resisting disease, for example, uh, being the consequence of the variant of one gene or multiple genes or in most cases how uh, these genes interact with the environment that the individual stays in. The first uh, determination of the human genome sequence was done uh, or was done in the 90s and published in 2003. It was a very large international effort and it cost one billion dollars approximately took 13 years. However, in uh, less than 10 years ago, there was a, a technolo technology shift in, in DNA sequencing uh, that drastically uh, increased the throughput of uh, these uh, DNA sequencing. And this has caused the, the cost per genome to fall through the floor. So uh, nowadays we're down at the thousand dollar level to determine the genome sequence of a human and it's done in two days. Uh, so there's a fantastic drastic uh, improvement there. Uh, this will have great impact on medical research. Uh, it will take genetic research to whole different levels which will open up new opportunities for, for understanding this, uh, mechanisms for disease for example. And this will be based on determining the whole genome sequence of a large number of individuals. And it will also have an effect on clinical treatment. Uh, in the not too distant futures, I, I think that most of us, us will have the whole genome sequence determined as a routine clinical test. So we are at the start of a revolu revolution, really. But this also presents challenges. Um, you saw in the previous uh, diagram uh, a trajectory of Moore's law, uh, capacity of computers double in 18 months. Currently the uh, increase in sequence data doubles every six months. So um, we have to find ways of catching up. Um, and it's estimated that genomics data will in, in within the next decade be by far the largest research data domain uh, there. So to handle this, to analyze the data, we need uh, large storage resources, high performance computing. Um, and we have now reached a tipping point where it's often more costly to store and analyze the data than it is to generate it. And this shift has come extremely fast which means that the research communities are not on top of this. They, they are not aware. They are lagging behind here. Another complication with human data is that it is personal data in the legal sense. Not only is it personal, it's also sensitive. Uh, it's related to health, as it's in, in described in the current EU directive. Uh, genetic data is uh, explicitly mentioned in the uh, general data protection regulation that will come into effect in May 2018 as well. So the computing environments that we need, the infrastructure we need, has to be, uh, have a heightened level of security when we deal with this data. And when we speak about open access to human data, uh, we shouldn't mean unrestricted access to the data. There should always be a scientific reasons why someone should uh, have access to the data. 
which is in accordance with the consent given by the individuals concerned. As well as there should be uh, assurances and transfer of legal responsibility that the data will be handled safely. Right, you say, let's anonymize, anonymize it. Well, the problem is that it's theoretically possible to identify the individual from the data itself. It's inherent. And any piece of metadata you have, the easier this will get. So this is still, I should point out, a very extremely difficult task to do. Uh, so the risk for, for breach of, of personal identity or um, integrity is currently very low. This will change over time. But this is not a reason not to, dis we shouldn't disregard this. Uh, so we have to balance uh, this, this uh, great potential uh, for, for value for, for society with the ethical and legal obligations to protect the privacy of those involved. So what do we have to get to work? Well, uh, as with, I guess, all other sciences, the scientists must see the value in annotating and sharing the data. Um, they may have to uh, understand why data should be fair and metadata, proper metadata here is then key. Uh, within um, Europe, uh, there is an infrastructure called Elixir, where there's ongoing work to work out best best practices standards to help in this. There's, this is also an international effort together with uh, the US uh, Big Data to Knowledge Program. Um, but uh, uh, the scientific communities have to be educated. There is a lack of education. In this. The infrastructure providers must offer efficient solutions that makes it possible to safely analyze, store and share whole genome data. Uh, we have efforts in the Nordics in a project called Trygve, which is a Nordfosk uh, uh, financed uh, project. And for storing and sharing, they worked within the Elixir infrastructure uh, to improve the existing functionalities of something called EGA, the European Genome Phenome Archive, which has mechanisms for sharing uh, the uh, sensitive data. And also, uh, makes it easier for researchers to, to uh, uh, adhere to the ethical and personal data legislation. There are also efforts on the way to be able to um, query human data sets without really, uh, giving out the individual information. Again, a lot of training is needed because these are issues that are very hard. And finally, I'd just to bring out, we, I think we need to start discussion in society about the consequences and implications of availability of whole genome sequence data. Uh, there's an upcoming citizen uh, or patient science movement where people are putting up their own genetic information online. But I cannot, so I cannot prevent my brother or cousin from putting his data up. Uh, but that data will tell something about me. So what are the implications of this? Could a potential employer uh, make inferences about my personality from my brother's DNA sequence? Do we as a society want this? If not, what should we do about it? We have to start this discussion. It's my view that research should stay away from open, really open, open access uh, to data. Uh, it has to be controlled but that should not prevent us from sharing this type of data for research. Thank you. <laughs>